In the year 2034, Earth is attacked by a hostile alien race from the Alpha Centauri system, which causes tremendous damage even though they're never physically seen. By the year 2050, force shield domes are built over the cities to protect them from constant incoming attacks, and democracy has been lost to a global leadership based on a totalitarian military. When he was a child, Spencer liked to build rockets, hoping one day he would be able to explore space. However when the war against the aliens took over the government's priorities, he lost his dad, space travel was cancelled, and Spencer became a weapons designer instead. The year is now 2079, and Spencer is happily married to Maya, the love of his life. One morning, they're watching the news and they learn that after losing an important colony, the Chancellor is visiting their region for a secret meeting with government scientists. There's also talk of a huge fire that has devastated Sutton Woods and nobody knows the cause. Afterward, Maya leaves for her job at the Veterans Hospital, which is always over capacity because of the war. Spencer goes to the building belonging to the project, which specializes in weapon research. There Spencer meets with his friend Nelson and they discuss their upcoming meeting with the Chancellor and Spencer's camping trip to Sutton Woods last weekend before the fire. They also notice that there's more security than usual around because of the Chancellor's visit. When they go to check on the latest weapon, which is a bomb almost as huge as a building, they're interrupted by Major Hathaway who works for the Earth Security Administration or ESA. When Spencer shakes hands with him, Hathaway suddenly reveals a taser from under his sleeve that immediately tases Spencer, leaving him wiggling in pain on the ground. Nelson tries to help him, but the guards push him away while Spencer is taken away on a stretcher. On his way out of the building, Spencer keeps having visions that mix all his memories in a delirious montage that doesn't have any sense. Then he passes out, only to wake up moments later and find himself strapped to a chair in a mysterious room, still feeling dizzy. While some people watch from a window, Hathaway comes in and begins talking about Spencer's life as if he was a different guy from the one sitting there. As some guards walk by with some weird tools, Hathaway pulls up some images on a screen and explains that three days ago, his team intercepted a Centauri intelligence courier and discovered a plan to infiltrate Earth's society. They'd be using humanoid genetic cyborgs that would steal the memories and DNA from actual people and replace them in their daily lives, yet they'd never be aware of what they really are. This alien courier also had a hit list and Spencer's name was on it, which implies the man strapped to the chair now isn't the real Spencer but a cyborg. The real Spencer is probably dead, and this cyborg was sent to kill the Chancellor in the upcoming meeting. Spencer denies all this, swearing he's the real deal, but to prove his point, Hathaway plays a recording of another cyborg they caught. Even while he was being hurt for information, the man still believed he was a real human and kept talking about his family until the very end. The recording also showed how a machine removed his heart, and inside they found a Centauri U-bomb, which could only be triggered by a specific word or event. Spencer realizes they're about to do the same to him and notices Nelson at the window so he tries to beg for his help, but Nelson believes the story and gives him the cold shoulder. Hathaway tells his team to prepare the machine, and suddenly Spencer begins acting like a robot, saying he's loyal to the Centauri. Hathaway knows he's acting, but he still keeps it up when the guards come to pick him up and he uses the distraction to grab a tool from the medical tray, allowing him to attack the man and steal a gun. Spencer keeps a guard as a shield and hostage, but Hathaway shoots anyway, so Spencer drops to the ground and escapes through the evacuation tunnel on the wall. As the alarms begin echoing through the whole building, Spencer finds the stairs and runs through them, making him trip and fall against a bunch of barrels. Feeling dizzy and in pain, Spencer can hear voices approaching, so he tries to hide in a corner while waiting for the elevator to come. Unfortunately when the elevator finally stops, the doors open to reveal even more guards that are about to shoot, so Spencer immediately shoots first to kill them all. Then he enters the elevator, and he's devastated to discover Nelson is there too and he's shot him by mistake. Spencer clings to his friend in desperation, but there's nothing he can do, and since Hathaway is coming with more guards, Spencer escapes once again by taking an evacuation tunnel. This helps him finally leave the building and come out into a dark corridor, where he tries to call Maya. She's heard he's been arrested for treason, but Spencer tells her it's a lie and that he needs her help. He wants to go to the hospital to get his medical file to do a comparison study, that way he can prove this body is the same as the old one and not a cyborg. However Maya tells him not to come because he'll put the hospital in danger and she hangs up. Afterward Spencer keeps on running, but he begins to feel sick when his memories keep going crazy in his mind. When he falls to the ground, he notices a bunch of guards coming after him, but after blinking a few times and calming down his mind he realizes he had been having a vision. Then Spencer finishes running the last few miles of the corridor to come out of the underground facility, where he discovers he's in an area destroyed by war outside the city. ESA flying cars are patrolling the area to find him, and Spencer runs as fast as he can while dodging the light beams. Meanwhile at the ESA headquarters, Hathaway's superior is scolding him because he doesn't even have a scan of Spencer's bomb and the Chancellor will be arriving soon. Hathaway explains that center nanotechnology eludes standard detection, and they can't shoot it because it'll still explode, so they can only wait and keep an eye on Spencer until he makes a mistake. Back to Spencer, he manages to hide from the searching cars by entering an impoverished neighborhood filled with people whose life has gone downhill because of the war. 
What Spencer doesn't know it's that the government has trackers everywhere and soon they detect his location, thanks to the SIM code that every citizen has inside their body. Eventually he finds an abandoned building and ignores a girl that tells him he shouldn't be there as he breaks a window to sneak inside. After avoiding a few shady people, he enters a room and rushes to the bathroom, where he opens a cabinet only to be startled by a falling toothbrush. Then he notices there's blood on his hand, and Spencer wants to believe that makes him real. At that moment, the ESA cars show up in the neighborhood and everyone begins running to hide while the guards take over the streets, asking anyone if they've seen Spencer while showing his picture. While Spencer sees all this through the window, he notices the arrival of Hathaway and his men, who put up a special machine to scan the building that allows them to find his location. The guards break into the building and Spencer immediately begins running away, taking the stairs as fast as he can as they chase him through the dark corridors. Eventually Spencer takes a twisted turn and hides inside another room, but when the guards are about to catch him, a different group of people gets to him first and cover his head with a bag before taking him away. By the time the guards make it to the room, Spencer is gone and they only found the little girl, so they leave to search a different building. The mysterious people take Spencer into another area and lock him up in a cell while they argue over what to do with him, wondering if they may get a reward for handing him over. The leader Kale decides it's too dangerous to have him here and takes Spencer away to the Innerdome border, intending to hand him to the border patrol. Spencer tries to buy him with money and food rations, but Kale responds by aiming his gun at him, so Spencer makes an offer of medicine instead. Since Kale is still wary, Spencer gives him his wife's system code for Kale to use his computer and confirms she has access to medicine. Spencer swears Maya will give him anything to get her husband back, and Kale accepts the deal. Meanwhile at the hospital, Hathaway is interrogating Maya and telling her about Nelson's death. However Maya refuses to believe she wouldn't know her husband is a copy and tells him she hasn't heard from Spencer. Back in the old neighborhood, Kale takes Spencer to their poor hospital, where a doctor proceeds to remove the SIM code from Spencer's back. It's a quick procedure and soon Spencer is ready to go, but his short time there allows him to see how much Kale cares for his people. Before they leave, Spence decides to keep his SIM code instead of letting the doctor destroy it. Afterward, Spencer and Kale leave through a special tunnel and find a shady group of people looking at them with suspicion. Kale talks to them and gets them to leave in peace, but then he points his gun at Spencer, demanding to know what he's hiding. Spencer points out that Kale shouldn't trust those people because if they were telling the truth, they wouldn't have left in peace. At that moment, the group comes back with weapons and throws a metal bar at Kale, pushing him away from Spencer. They try to go after Spencer next, but Kale reacts quickly and begins fighting them, showing great battling skill. As Kale knocks out the first few men, Spencer helps the best he can by hitting with any object he can find around, but soon both he and Kale are being held by their necks. Fortunately Kale manages to reach his gun and shoots the guy holding Kale down, then takes out his own captor, which ends the fight for good. In order to avoid another problem like this, Spencer confesses he's wanted because they think he's a cyborg with a bomb inside, but Kale only laughs. The duo then keeps on moving and walks through an aqueduct that takes them right outside the hospital building. There are holograms with Spencer's wanted sign all over the place, so he hides his face with a hoodie and sunglasses before they cross the city barrier. The scanners don't detect him, thanks to the lack of SIM code, but Spencer still feels extremely paranoid and thinks everyone is watching him. He tries to run away, but suddenly his mind begins freaking out with a bunch of memories and it makes him pass out. Kale quickly rescues Spencer and hides him in an alley, where he wakes up and expresses his guilt for having killed Nelson. At that moment Hathaway shows up with his men, so Spencer takes the gun from Kale and mingles into the crowd until he bumps into Hathaway. Luckily the Major doesn't recognize him, and he leaves with his men in another direction when they get an alert from Spencer's SIM code. It turns out Spencer dropped his SIM code inside Hathaway's pocket, and while the ESA goes after that signal, Spencer and Kale safely sneak around to enter the hospital through an abandoned area. Unfortunately the door in this room is locked and won't open no matter how hard they pull. They decide to use a metal bar to stop the roof fans, then they climb out through the resulting hole, although they have to be careful to avoid the light beams when the flying ambulances pass by to bring patients or bodies. They take advantage of this by stealing some equipment from the ambulance, and now Kale pretends to be a doctor while Spencer is his patient on a stretcher. This allows them to walk through the hospital corridors with no issues, although Spencer's wanted image is here as well. When he sees Maya, he has to stop himself from talking to her to avoid attention. Outside, the ESA is still going on a wild chase until Hathaway finally checks his pocket and finds Spencer's SIM code. He immediately calls all his men back and after scolding them, he sends them to search the hospital. Back to Spencer, he uses some of the gloves they stole to open the doors with the fingerprints left on the latex, gaining access to the medicine room. Kale immediately begins filling his bag with as much medicine as he can, and he feels so grateful that he gives Spencer his gun. Afterward Spencer leaves the room and using another glove, he gains access to his wife's office, where he retrieves a disc with all his old studies. In the process he accidentally activates the desk screen and sees a recording of when he was pretending to be a robot for Hathaway, which makes him wonder what's truly real. Then Spencer sneaks into the bathroom to corner Dr. Carone, a friend of Maya's. 
Caron doesn't know where Maya is, explaining she left with the ESA 30 minutes ago. Having no other choice, Spencer makes Caron take him to the room with the scanners, and after he breaks the alarm button, they connect the disc with the old studies to start the comparison. Spence lays down on the scanner table and uses a mirror to look at the screen, where his old scan appears next to the currently ongoing one. However Caron still has his personal communicator and sends an alert to the guards, who immediately begin making their way there. When a nurse accidentally enters the room, Caron sends her away with a silent gesture, and she rushes down the hallway where she bumps into Kale. Since she thinks he's a doctor, she lets him know the wanted man from the news is here before running to warn the ESA. In the scanner room, the machine interrupts the procedure when it reaches Spencer's heart because it detected a problem and needs to recalibrate. At that moment Kale comes in and warns Spencer to run right before two guards enter the room as well. Another fight ensues and Kale manages to quickly knock out a guard, but Spencer isn't fast enough and the other guard grabs a scalpel that he uses to stab Kale. Spencer cuts in and knocks out the guy before rushing to Kale's side, grabbing some gauze to take care of his wound. Now Kale can grab his medicine bag again and escape to help his people. At that moment Hathaway and his men finally make it to that floor, and Spencer has to run away, taking a shortcut by removing a grill and falling into the lower floor. There are guards here as well, so he runs behind the hospital workers, this way the guards can't open fire. Spencer manages to escape through the same room he came through, and while the guards are busy searching the area, Hathaway finds the interrupted scan, finding the error very interesting. Moments later, Spencer makes it to the station, where he hears the news that the Chancellor's visit has been cancelled and she's never come to the city. Apparently the firefighters are still working on the fire in Sutton Woods, having put out 90% of it. This reminds Spencer of him telling Nelson about his camping trip there and how he luckily missed the fire. Then he finds a spot to hide and calls Maya again, but she can't speak because she's being watched. Spencer tells her to come to the place where they first met and hangs up. Sometime later, Maya shows up at Sutton Woods, entering through the front door because it's been ruined by the fire. Spencer quickly finds her and explains an alien spaceship landed here, which is what caused the fire. However their camping trip was before that, meaning the aliens never got to him. If they find the ship, they can prove his innocence. Maya can't help crying and finally confesses she doesn't believe the ESA, then the couple finally reunites with a proper hug. Suddenly a bunch of lights are turned on around them, meaning the ESA is here. The couple begins running away through the forest as the guards chase after them, and after seeing nothing but trees, they finally find the spaceship. The couple begins pushing all the fallen branches to gain access to the cockpit, and at that moment the ESA surrounds them. Hathaway admits he had been wrong and wants Spencer to come with him, saying he doesn't want to see what's inside the ship, but Spencer doesn't listen and opens the cockpit anyway. To his shock, inside the cockpit he finds Maya's original body, who the aliens killed to replace her. The other Maya is disturbed to learn she is a cyborg and steps back as Hathaway explains Spencer had only been a decoy and Maya had been the real goal all along. When Hathaway calls her a thing, Maya tries to run away, but Hathaway immediately shoots and kills her. While the guards retrieve the real body, a devastated Spencer clings to the cyborg, not understanding how he could have missed the fact she wasn't real. The guards try to get her away from him, but Spencer fights back and Hathaway lets him have his moment. Suddenly the guards make another discovery, there's a second alien pod, and inside, they find Spencer's real body. It turns out the main guy is a cyborg after all, and the trigger for his bomb is learning that he's fake. As soon as cyborg Spencer sees the person he killed, his eyes go black and his bomb explodes, destroying the forest and killing everyone in the area. Sometime later, Kale is in the hospital helping everyone with the medicine. The news announces the incident in the forest and talks about the casualties, presenting Spencer as a patriotic man that worked hard on his research to win the war but also mentioning that he had been a wanted man. This leaves Kale wondering if he had known the real Spencer. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.